Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining us for another edition of The Inner Change Maker. Today we have with us the one, the only, Jarek Robbins. Jarek, how's everything going on your end, brother? It is going amazing. I, I hope I'm the only Jarek Robbins. I have met other Jareks, uh, which is interesting, and I Google every now and then to see who's out there, and I have found that there's a badass Jarek in Hawaii who wins rowing competitions. I'm very proud of my name, Twin. <laughs> That's amazing. I have actually never seen that that spelling before, so I'm, I'm glad that you're into you know Googling yourself and everything. But um, why don't we kickstart it th- in this direction? I know you've won you know numerous uh, numerous like awards. You've been you know redefining success in your own life. You know there's all these amazing. I know you do so many different adventures in, in your own life. Um, let's let's break it down. Why do you do what you do? Uh, it, it's really simple. I I. I mean, in, in my personal philosophy and our philosophy here as, a, as an organization is we want to challenge the status quo, think different, yeah. illuminate the true potential in each and every person that we cross paths with or that crosses paths with our message. And, and, and that thought, just starting off there, it, it, it's to challenge what everyone thinks is what you have to do. It's to challenge those moments that people say, well, that's just how life is. I, d- I don't believe that. I believe if we can challenge those moments, we can redefine what life is is and isn't supposed to be. We can redesign life on our own terms and decide how we really want to live it. Um, the, the other part, though, is I, I believe in a three-part philosophy, which is learn it, live it, give it. So, so yeah. learn what you want to do to live the life you want, live it, go apply it and figure out how to actually make it work, and then pay it forward, give it. And, and so that philosophy of illuminating the true potential in each and every person that we cross paths with is really important to me because you know, I, I could go out and, and we're looking to do this as an organization where we can go buy other companies that have absentee ownership. You own it, it makes you money. Boom, you're done. Now you can sit there, cash flow on it all month, and you're wonderful. That doesn't necessarily do it for me. That's mm-hmm. awesome to live an abundant life financially and be able to have a lot of options. That, that doesn't do it as far as the aspect in my heart and soul of how I want to leave a mark on this planet. Yeah. So the whole give it aspect and illuminating the true potential in other people is figuring out like popcorn, who else out there is in the same shell as I am and how do I get them to pop so that they can go experience life how they want to live like we do. Yeah. Well, I absolutely love that analogy. I've never heard that um, said before, that little popcorn thing. And and that's part of the reason why I'm so excited to have you on the interchange maker. We are always talking about, you know, people that are choosing legacy over currency, people that are creating that level of impact. And I'm so glad you mentioned that philosophy um, because I really want to, you know, do a deep dive in and and, and break it down tactically for people. Um, but before we do that, let's let's give the audience a little more context. And as they can sure. probably hear, and if they're watching this, they they see that you know you, you're just living in. In, in, in what I call kind of alignment, right? It's it's like you're living in flow. You, you got all this passion, this energy. Did you always know that you wanted to be like this motivational speaker, this like change maker? I mean, tell me about like the day. Was there like a day that you knew that you were going to do this for the rest of your life? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll go back on something you said though real quick because sure. people like to say this, legacy over currency. Um, my thought is why not both? And and yep. and this is the decision I made years ago. I was working at my first, you know, first real job. My first job was at Blockbuster Video. Um, I oh, in high school I was throwback. Throwback. <laughs> I, I was tall enough to look over the shelves, and I was fourteen, so I couldn't work the register legally. So they allowed me to be security. Uh, <laughs> I could happily say that I got results because theft went down sixty percent from the day I started working. Right. <laughs> I guess I scared the other kids that were stealing shit to not steal it anymore. Right. So it worked. Um, but but what was interesting? My first real job, like at an office where I was doing stuff like that, or a traditional job, was at my dad's nonprofit. And when I was working there, um, that was my heart and soul: helping people, feeding the homeless, taking care of people in need. You know, delivering uh, service to the prisons and, and, and people who really challenged. And we had a youth program that's really mastering and helping the youth become the best version of who they are. It was remarkable. I loved it, and the ability to just serve other people all day and call that a job is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you can get paid to help people. It's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, and I, I thought it was amazing. At the same time, receiving the paycheck every you know biweekly was like, oh, well, that wasn't as exciting. But I love the people. Yeah, <laughs> and and you hear a lot about that. And some people in nonprofit they really don't care about the money. 
which mm-hmm. is awesome. I have that side of me, but but I'm I'm a Gemini. I've got two sides. The other side of yeah. me is like, hey, I want to take cool trips. I want to ride on a jet. You know, yeah. I want to drive a cool car eventually and have those kind of things. Do I think any of those things will make me happy as a human being? No, but they're a hell of a lot of fun to experience. Right. <laughs> Do I think, you know, that if I only focused on helping others, would I have a fulfilled life? Completely. And at the same time, though, I, I like the whole thought of both. Why not have the opportunity? I don't make one right or wrong. I remember a friend of mine who was totally into like yoga and meditation and blissfulness and, and you know, non-attachment. And she was so happy, you know, just being non-attached and a yogi and had this great community. And one day she learned that she was a great copywriter. She started doing this killer copy. She started making ridiculous amounts of money very quickly, bought herself a BMW, jacked up her house, like everything got cool. And all of a sudden, all her yogi friends were like, oh, you're one of those people now. I get it. You, you've, you're attached to your stuff. And she's like, no, shit, I just want some of it. Who cares? Yeah. And it's that thought of still being able to be non-attached, yet allowing yourself to enjoy the heck out of what's possible. And, and if it's possible, go get it. You know, if you really want to, or tell yourself a story that you don't want it or it's not possible for you, that's okay too. But that thought for me became, hey, why not both? The blend of purpose, living a legacy, really making that mark on the world while still having the ability to earn and grow and expand. Hence the comment in the beginning when I said, listen, if you just want to make money, use vehicles that just make you money. Those are not hard to acquire. There's a gentleman named Keith Cunningham. He has a course that we took called How to Buy, Sell, and Exit Businesses. And he teaches you how to get the funding, how to identify a good business, how to purchase a business with an absentee ownership so you don't even have to be there. There's a team running it and managing it. You just literally own it. Right. <laughs> and every month when there's profit, it dumps into your account. Bingo. Like that's not difficult. Mm. Now for most people to wrap their head around that, it's like, whoa, you must have need like all kinds of financing and money and stuff. It's like, no, you don't. Yeah. You know, if you do it right, <laughs> I was talking to the bank the other day. We have a conversation with them later today. They were saying how a gentleman came in. He purchased like, I don't know, 15, 20 FedEx routes uh, here in the US and he got 115% financing for it. Wow. Meaning they gave him all the money to buy it and they gave and him a, more cash more. Yeah. just to make sure he had some cash reserves to, to, to run it. And it's all absentee. He doesn't do any of it. He just owns it. Wow. And again, people's minds go, like, that's possible? You can yeah. just do that? Yes, you can. It's called owning a business. So I, I love I love that you 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 just say this. Um, and sorry, I'm just gonna jump in at random Please. points here. But uh, so is it really all a mindset game, in your opinion? Because I, I've been to you know some of these you know entrepreneurial dinners. You go to the networking events, and you, you know you just progress through your own entrepreneurial journey. And you just every time I find that you I, I meet someone even through the show, such as yourself, and you know they're, they're clearly their mindsets on a different like planet or just different vibration of yours. However you want to interpret it, it's yeah. so amazing. And it's like it's not that they're that different it's just that they believe their mindset is just set to that's possible you know seven figures is a possibility eight figures nine figures right a lot of people don't even like i guarantee a lot of people have never even written out what nine figures like what that even looks like on paper yeah you know so is it really a mindset thing i'm just curious uh mostly and and if you go back my traditional background is in psychology i got my ba in psych uh university san diego and and so studying mental constructs of people it, it, it's more than just a belief. It's more than just a feeling. It, it's the combination of them. It's a belief, a feeling, a word, a phrase, a thought, an image. It's whatever you've constructed in your mind of how things are supposed to be. Most of that is based on reference of what we look around and see around us, uh, what things we find normal and, and comfortable to be a part of. So for some people, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a situation. I was looking yeah. online. I found some car washes for sale, absentee ownership, the power sh- power washes. I was like, well, that could be interesting. I looked it up and they had one pack of them for sale, I think in Texas or Arizona for like 38 million bucks. I was like, wow, that's a bit out of my field, but heck could be cool. Right. It was 10 million bucks in cash flow, you know, in, in revenue and $4.1 million in, in net cash each year. Like, wow, those are some big ass numbers. (laughs) And to wrap my head around that, because you hear people who are, you know, online gurus talking about like, I have a seven figure business. I made this, I made that. Good for them. High freaking five. Yeah. But if you could go buy a seven figure business that cash flows $4 million a year in one transaction, 
Like you just skipped the 22 years it took that kid to build his business. Yeah. <laughs> and you got better cash flow than him with more profit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so that's this thought, how you wrap your head around that. First mm -hmm. off, if you're listening, how much risk are you willing to take on? You got to think about this. Yeah. Are you willing to put yourself $38 million in debt first? Now, some people have a screaming, why not? In their nervous system. <laughs> those we call entrepreneurs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, those crazy people, you mean. <laughs> no, we don't call them crazy. We call them entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yes, yeah, they are yeah. slightly crazy too. Other people who just heard that comment went, <gasps> And might have had a heart attack, and it's not even their debt. I just mentioned it. You're right. <laughs> Those people are better off to go get a job and work somewhere or work within a small team with less debt. Mm. And, and so the, the biggest element there when you talk about mindset, yes, it's mindset. It's also knowing what your nature is. Mm. If your nature loves crazy risk, you might be made to be an entrepreneur and go take on $38 million in debt, not knowing if you're going to be able to pay it back. And totally okay that if it, the business rapidly fails, that you'll find another way to come up with $38 million and pay the thing back over the next 10 years, right. which is insane <laughs> if you think about it. Big, crazy risk. Yeah. But you got to think about it. Those people are the ones who take the gnarly, crazy risks in life and have the ability to get there. And yes, it does have to do with mindset. I mean, when you sign a form that has $38 million in, in, in debt to it and you're sitting there going, whoa, <laughs> most people are like, you're so successful. Your company makes $10 million a year. You're like, dude, you haven't even seen the bill that's behind this thing. Right. And, yeah, you got to have a powerful mindset to make it through that. you got to be able to stay focused on the good stuff. And this is a crazy extreme example. Yeah. But it, it's so much easier for people to wrap their head around when you see something that big. Mm. You know, if we were to take a microscope and zoom in on someone's life, this is the same exact thing, the risk that you have to take to enter in a relationship with another human being. That's a risk. Okay, yeah. You know, are they the right fit? Is it going to work out? You know, if I've opened my heart, are they going to kick me in the jaw when I'm not looking and do something crazy to me? Right, right. Um, you know, uh, is it going to fit well with our families? Like, you got to go down the whole list. That's a big old risk. And it's a long-term risk. If you get married, like, that's a forever thing. That's not a, hey, six months, well, unless you're L.A., but, you know, for most parts of the world, it's considered a forever thing. And, and it's the thought of, like, you're taking a risk. And you have to be willing mentally and emotionally and physically to wrap your head around what you're stepping into and be okay and prepared for mm -hmm. the complete unknown, yeah. which a lot of people don't like. You know, we live in a world where people want certainty. They want to know if I pick this person for a relationship, it's going to work. They want to know that if I have this job, I'm going to get paid this certain amount. And, and, and the God honest truth is, I mean, you can work for a company that's 150 years old and goes bankrupt overnight. And now you have no job. And so the ability mentally to pre be totally OK with absolute uncertainty will give you an edge in life. I, I, I think that that was amazing. There's a few points there, um, you know, before because I love the whole piece of like uh, the, the way you said, like nature, right? Like self-awareness. You know, and it's like, do how well do you know yourself, right? Um, but another point, uh, one of my like kind of like virtual mentors, Bren Burchard, you know, he yeah. talks about the difference between successful and unsuccessful people. Sure. And you know, people say, you know, maybe they're listening to this and they're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Jarek. I don't know how to buy and and sell businesses. And I love that you know you like mentioned a course in the beginning, um, and you're like, you know what, we made time. And we didn't know, we didn't have the skill. And yeah. so we made time and we went and learned it. Yeah. And, and you know, Brendan hold, says... Hold, hold on one second. I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah. Ugh, let me grab this thing. Hold on. I don't want to knock everything over. Ugh. This, is, this is what learning how to buy and sell and exit a business looks like. Oh, my God. Like, for, for those of you that are listening, it's just a massive binder. Yeah, it's a four inch thick binder. Oh my Ugh. goodness. But, but, you know, Brendan talks about that's the difference, right? Because it's not that unsuccessful, it's not like people are, are any different. You don't know certain skills, but unsuccessful people go, oh, well, I, I don't know anything about car washes or I don't know anything about buying businesses. It's probably not for me. Right. Sure. Whereas successful people to go, well, you know what? I'm going to go schedule it in my calendar 
and I'm going to take this course. I'm going to meet with other, you know, I'm going to interview car washer, you know, car business washer owners, and, and I'm going to see how it's done. I'm going to read some books on it. I'm going to listen to some some yep. podcasts if they have it on it. Um, and so that, I think that's an amazing, you know, distinction, and I just wanted to point that out. Um, yeah, you know, for I'll, the I'll give you. I'll give you something else to, to add on and, and, and mesh with that for a sec. Sure, yeah. Um, the, the, the difference there is it, it comes all the way back to mindset, which mm. you mentioned before. Mm. And the mindset is, am I more committed to my excuses or am I more committed to getting the result I want? That's it. And this goes all the way down to like, did you work out today? You were either more committed to a reason why you couldn't or you were more mm. committed to the fact that you were going to make time for it and create it no matter what. Yeah. And and that's it. You know, did you say you love? Did you did you tell the person you love that you love them? You were either more committed to some reason and excuse of why you didn't have time to take ten seconds to look them in the eye and really be present and say it, or you're more committed to saying, you know what, I'm willing to be thirty seconds late for my next meeting. I'm gonna go look them in the eye and tell them right now. And 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 that's commitment. It's saying which are you more committed to? And the truth is, you're you're committed to one of them. And many times, uh, for most people. If, if you try to draw a line, and, and I don't like categorizing people successful and unsuccessful. I think everyone's successful right. at something in their life. Mm. Um, you know, I lived in a village in Africa with no running water, no electricity, no toilets, rural farming village, and I could meet some of the most successful people in the world there. And it's not because they live in a mansion and drive a you know, boat or Ferrari or some shit. It, it, it's because in their life, based on their blueprint of how they believe they should be living, their life matches that and therefore in their mind they are wildly successful. Mm. And and I've met people who live in mansions, drive decked out badass cars, you know, have access to private jets, boat around the world, have the hottest people in the world that they're dating and pursuing and and they're feel freaking miserable and in their mind they're not even slightly successful because in their mind the blueprint of what they believe should be happening and their actual life don't match. Mm. And, and that's where success comes from. It's the ability for your mental construct, your blueprint of how you've put together what success is and isn't for that to actually equal out and match in front of you. If you want to feel successful, that can happen today. Change your blueprint. You can change your blueprint to match the current life you have and instantaneously wake up feeling like the most successful person on the planet. If you want to feel like shit your whole life, always make your blueprint so much more unattainable than your current life circumstance. And you will always, always feel like it's not enough. Now, it's good to feel not enough at some stages of development of your life because it drives you. If you're a young guy listening to this in your 20s, there's an insatiable hunger for more that exists inside of your nervous system. Meaning, even if you went out and made $10 billion in revenue, you would still want more just for the sake of more. And eventually, you'll hit a stage and moment of life and when you start to realize that it's like, wow, you know, I've climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, I've climbed, uh, you know, Mount Shasta, I've climbed all these mountains, Mount Fuji, like it's amazing. I, lo I love climbing mountains. There's always Everest, like the biggest thing I could ever imagine. But but mountain after mountain after mountain, and and that's what you know your 20s, most some of your 30s is all about. Somewhere yeah. around 28, 35 years old, you start to transition from just trying to climb mountains just to climb mountains and nothing's ever good enough. There's always a bigger, better, faster one out there you got to have your hands on. And eventually you hit a stage where you're like, wow, it'd be nice to find something worth investing my life into. And you transition from hunger and drive and curiosity of what's next to purpose and meaning and something that you can feel will actually become your legacy, something worth investing all of the next 15 to 20 years of your life into. And that transitionary period is, is really important. Now, for women, there's a whole different path. Um, but, but for men, I'm guessing they're probably right around these stages of life. Yeah, It's really important to know where you are and, and to know how to maximize the stage you're at. If you have an achievement-focused mindset, one of the things that will screw you is you're in a stage that's all about conquering mountains, bettering yourself, right. overcoming obstacles, hitting the next challenge. But you're standing in that stage looking and saying like, no, I need to find purpose and meaning because that's what successful people who are ahead of me do. Right. And the truth what is, saying. Yeah. exactly. But here's the God honest truth. If you don't maximize the stage you're in, you're going to look back at some stage of life and be like, oh, fuck, I missed it. And so one thing you need to do, sit down and figure out, A, what stage of life you're in. Mm. 
B, what is your bucket list for this stage of life? That you or I call it a live it list because I was pissed at a bucket list when I was I was living in that village. I got told I had five days left to live, um, and I was pissed at my fucking bucket list because that shit wasn't coming true. It was all on fucking paper, and I was upset about it. Excuse right. all the language, but I was really ticked off when that happened. <laughs> I was like, fuck bucket list. I'm going to die here and I didn't do any of it. Yeah. So I'm like, it has to be a fucking live it list. That way it's something you go out and do now. <laughs> and you got to live the damn thing. And so I started putting deadlines and like taking crazy action. I have plaques and awards and all this shit around here. Yeah. Um, uh, racing cars, skydiving, like every, sh- diving with sharks, like everything you imagine. I went on right. as fast as I could. I had to live it as fast as possible. And, and so that concept of create that live it list for this stage of your life and say, hey, if I only get to be in this stage once in my life, what's mm. everything I want to experience, everywhere I want to go, the people I want to meet, the people I want to share it with, the opportunities I want to dive into that will let me look back at this moment of life and be like, wow, you know, I really maximized that moment that I was blessed with at that stage or moment. Same thing in a relationship. You only get the first six months of, of that relationship if it's going to be your wife or husband. You only get that first six months once. What do you do to maximize it? You only get that first year in that relationship once. What's your bucket list of, of what you or your limit list of what you want to do in the first 12 months of your ideal relationship? Mm. You know, you only get that first month of your dream job once. Like, yeah, you got to think about this shit and be like, wow, if I only get one of these, how am I going to maximize the hell out of it? Right. And if that process helps you perform better where you're at instead of being addicted to trying to be somewhere that you're not yet. I, I love it. I love it. And I'm so glad you like, you know, kind of weaved into a lot of that philosophy of that learn it, live it, um, you know, give it philosophy. So, you know, live it list. So people that are listening to this, let's let's break it down tactically right now. You know, they're like they're jazzed up. They're really pumped. Um, they, you know, they're like, oh, this is like the perfect balance of profanity and mind blowingness. <laughs> right. So they're like live it list. Do they need to create it and just like attack? Like depending on obviously if they're in that stage or, you know, if they realize they're in that stage of seeking for for great greater purpose what 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 do they do you know like tactic what are the first two things that they do post podcasts sure so first know where you're at and 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 this is interesting if i were to throw this out there and i'll, I'll give you the path real quick just to map this out men sure. and women in case there's i'm sure there's ladies listening sure but in yeah. two seconds let me see if i can review this for you so so zero to 13 years old would be would be um a note i don't think anyone that young is listening but if you are it's all about thinking you're ready for battle and adventure but you're really not ready and mom or dad are keeping you in house just to make sure you're safe because if you go out in the real life waving around a wooden sword like life will kick your ass um it is just the god honest truth you're 13 you're not you're not ready yet yeah um now right around 13 young men develop into knights and at this stage 13 to by 13 to maybe let's say 13 to 28, 13 to 35, somewhere in that range. It's all about discovery, accomplishment, and an unsatiable thirst for more. So if you're in that stage, the way to get the most out of your life as a young man is to constantly challenge yourself to try to outdo whatever your current record is. Mm -hmm. If you've made it to the top of the local mountain in 10 minutes, see if you can do it in seven. See if you can do it in five. See if you can do it in four. Why? Purely to show yourself what's possible. In this stage of life, men have a really interesting relationship with their fathers because no matter how good they do, it's your father's responsibility to raise the goalpost on you and say, oh, You've done, you know, you did, you made $2 million in your business. Ah, why not four? And they're like, <laughs> dad, really? Come Shit. on. Like, <laughs> can it be good enough? Can't you say good job, son? What's wrong with you? you no, know, that's his job. It's your mom's job or, you know, that the nurture aspect to be like, oh, good job. I love you. I'm so proud. It's your dad's job to raise the damn goalpost and make it harder and harder and harder so you can prove to yourself what you're capable of. Mm. Now, that's the whole philosophy for the stage of knighthood discovery, adventure, going around the world, getting out there, trying new things, proving to yourself what you're capable of. If you're right around 28, 35 years old, you're going to transition. In the transitionary moment, you, there's a couple things you want to watch for in your relationship. What you're going to watch for is you'll have moments of uncertainty where you will be a little bit softer as, as a person than you were when you're totally certain about what you wanted. In that moment of relationship, what you have to watch for is your significant other, your spouse, they won't be used to be you not knowing what you want, not knowing how you want it, not knowing where you're going. And it'll create uncertainty in them, which will cause them to have to transition to a different moment in their life. 
And what what will be crazy that happens there is, is if let's say you're in a relationship, she's counting on you, mm. and she goes, you know, she's watching you. And one day you want to be an astronaut, and the next day you want to be a fireman, and the next day you're thinking about possibly opening a business, and then you know a hedge fund sounds good too. How in the world is she going to set her life plans on you when you change your shit every 10 days? Yeah. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that because you're searching for what you believe it is. That's mm-hmm. okay. Just know in a relationship, it's very difficult to give that other person total certainty when all those things are happening. So one thing that might happen just to be aware of because relationships are important at this stage of life yeah. is – you're totally certain that you're a wild, crazy man that's always out for more, 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 bigger, 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 better, better, better. She loves that about you. One day you wake up and you're like, well, maybe my purpose is in nonprofits. And she goes, whoa, what happened to the Ferrari and jet, bro? Like, yeah. I thought we were going places and now you just want to like help people. I mean, that's dandy and good and all, but that's not the life that you promised me six months ago when you were talking about climbing Everest. Know that that happens. <laughs> so yeah. be okay if you accidentally got in a long-term relationship with a person who wants to climb Everest and you decide that Kilimanjaro is your jam. Like that's okay. Just mm-hmm. be real and, and, and help her understand that that's a transitionary moment of your life and she needs to be ready for it too. Ladies, if you're listening, watch out for this because in that moment, there's two thoughts that a man has about relationship. Number one is I need to find a princess and build our kingdom together meaning they believe you are the right one for them for life and they will work with you to build the kingdom that they want to build for both of you. Mm. Um, Give you a heads up. There's another one. And the other one is I must build the kingdom first, then find my queen to share it with. Just a heads up. If you're dating a guy who believes this, he will date you for year after year after year after year until he feels he has successfully built that kingdom. Then he will kick your ass out and go find the queen to share it with. I don't care how much you think he loves you and it's the right fit and it's so amazing. You need to get in his head and you need to figure out what mindset he has immediately. Otherwise, you're going to waste some of your best years is what women say. Hanging out with a guy who's stringing you along only to the point that he finally feels, quote unquote, ready for that relationship. And then he kicks you to the curb and finds someone else to replace you. And that's heartbreaking for women because you just took them from 25 to 28 to 32. And then all of a sudden said, oh, you're not the one. Sorry. And she had a whole life vision planned out with you from that point forward. They don't stick around that long if they don't think it's is really the right investment as, as from a woman's standpoint, mostly. Um, now, flip side, there is a woman's path. Um, I can sum this up in just a couple spots. And, uh, you know, let's say 13 to 30, there's a stage called temptress. She figures out that through her mind, body, emotions, looks, uh, personality, style, approach, she can basically wrap any man around her pinky and get him to do whatever the hell she feels like in a moment's notice. Mm. So 13 to 30 young women figure this out. And, and it doesn't, it's not just because of the outfit they have on. It's their personality. It's the way they talk to you. It, it's their intelligence. It, it's right. who they are. They figure out they can get you right around their pinky and they can you know, flip you around town however they want. Yeah. And, and most young women, if you're listening, will probably nod because you know you got it. Yeah. Um, or oh, there's smile. a mirrored part and the mirrored aspect of this is you are a tomboy and the thought is i'm smart enough strong enough talented enough i can do it on myself and i don't need a stupid boy to help me Mm. and if you take that route then those other girls who manipulate the tar out of men annoy the shit out of you and usually you have a best friend who's getting manipulated by one of them and you think they're both idiots because how in the hell is he falling for it and why in the hell wouldn't she just do it herself And if that sounds familiar, you might be in a tomboy stance. No problem at all. You're a very capable, strong, intelligent woman who has the ability to kick some ass in life. Um, Now, if you fast forward these, those are 13 to 30 versions. Mm -hmm. If you go 30 to maybe 40, 50 years old, 28 to like 35 transition point, um, all of a sudden she goes from a temptress where she wants to manipulate and and use her powers to get what she wants out of life, all of a sudden to a princess. And the princess is strong enough, smart enough, talented enough, and capable enough who doesn't want to have to do it all on her own. She wants to be able to count on someone who can stand so strong that she can count on him. And she will test the shit out of that over time, but she needs someone she can count on. Yeah. Um, Now, the reverse of that, mirror back to the other side, is a businesswoman. She was smart enough, strong enough, talented enough as as a young girl. She's more than capable as a woman. She can kick most men's ass in the, when it comes to business and management and running shit. Yeah. And therefore, she owns it. Here's what's interesting. 
in this thought in relationships, and I'm glad the conversation of mindset came here, yeah. but in this thought of relationships, <laughs> I'll give you a game-changing, life-saving situation. Um, a woman has the ability to change hats based on how she feels momentarily. So she can literally go from businesswoman to princess, six minutes later back to businesswoman, two minutes later back to princess, based on how she feels in that moment. Here's what's fascinating. You need to understand what does she need, what does she want, and what does she desire most in each one of those stages. Because when she's a businesswoman, she needs you to stay the hell out of the way, have mm -hmm. her back, support her, and just be there for her if she needs you. Right. As a princess, she needs you to take care of shit, handle it, get it done, and allow her to be there as part of the journey. And if you mistake how to show up in those moments... You have a businesswoman, you show up, go, here, honey, let me grab you this. Let me do this. She's like, what the fuck are you doing that for? I can do it myself. You're like, okay, Jesus, okay, yeah. <laughs> he's off. Ten seconds later, you come back, and she's like, well, why didn't you bring me a glass of water? I'm thirsty. You're like, okay, <laughs> who's screwing with me here? Like, is this one of those, like, prank twin things? You're right, like, right, right. Messing with me? And, and you have to have the ability in a relationship, and this goes both ways. Some guys yeah. are like that. Some girls are like this. It's not a male-female thing. It just That's the easy way to describe it. You have, the ability, you have to have the ability to identify what hat they're wearing yeah. and what they need, want, and desire most when they're wearing that hat and how can you deliver it for them. Jarek, I love this conversation just because we just got like, that was like a, I don't know, five to seven minute like intensive, like that could have, we could have talked about that for like another hour, what have you. We can go days on the subject. We could, so. yeah, that, that's a, that's an amazing that, topic. I hope that, people That was listen. a crash course on the mini psychology of relationships so of like male and female oh man this is beauty um so last question for you you know the show is called the inner change maker when you hear the word change maker it's funny because we talked about you know distinctions and choosing words a lot even you know in this interview um but what comes to mind when you hear the word change maker um Hopefully someone who's wise enough to realize that change is a constant in life and they're not there necessarily to always have to cause change, but when they see change in motion, they can help direct and guide it in the proper way. Mm. And it, it's really interesting. What we do, what I do as a coach, what yeah. I think would fall under the category as a change maker when we'd work one-on-one -on -one with clients. Sure. But it's not our job to show up in their life and change their life. It's our job to identify things that are already starting to shift and help guide it in the smoothest, best way possible for them to get the results that they're after. I'm not here to shake up their world and change everything. I'm here to take what's already in motion and make sure it goes in the right direction to serve them and their needs and desires. Hmm. That's so when I, when I think a change maker, I think more of a guide. Nice. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a, that's a beautiful way of, of, of putting it. Um, also a beautiful way of segmenting into, you know, if people have enjoyed this conversation, and I know they thoroughly have because we covered what seemed like everything, but we went deep on some, on some, on some things <laughs> as well. Life. Well, there it is. Everything. There it is, guys. There's, there's the game plan for it all. Male, female, you like, just look up what age you're at and there you go. Um, but where can people follow you, um, on your journey? Obviously, you know, they could go pick up live it and, and do a deep dive on that. Um, but, um, you know, where can people follow you? What, what's like the, the channels that are working for you right now? Sure. Um, if you want to goof off with me and make funny faces, uh, follow me on Snapchat. We'll hang out. I'll, I'll do the puppy dog lick face on you and show <laughs> you. Uh, if, if you are on Instagram, we're all over there taking fun trips, going around the world, showing you cool places we go and what we're doing and hanging out. If you're on Amazing. Facebook, we do live chats uh, a couple times a week. I, I was going to say daily, but I don't want to go that far. A couple times a week, we do live chats. You can jump on there, ask us direct questions. I, I chat with people back and forth. We usually pick a topic, jam on it for 20, 30, 40 minutes. And then I also just interact with people as they're tossing questions out and help them. Um, if you are in a leadership position, check out performancecoachuniversity.com. It's our newest program we've created to help people better understand human dynamics and how to help maximize your own personal performance as well as your teams. If you are 
in one of those stages, not sure what life is and where you're going and how to get there and you don't know where you want to do or how you want to do it, grab our book, Live It, Achieve Success by Living With Purpose. It'll help you map out exactly what your journey is going to look like and exactly give you you know tools to make it happen. Um, if you're struggling with relationships and you want some fun, crazy insights, go to helpmefindlove.net. That's our other blog. If you want to take a wild, fun adventure to somewhere on Earth and do stuff like volcano boarding and volunteer service and, and you know do crazy shit like that, go to rapidresultsretreat.com. If, you, if you're looking for sales training <laughs> um, and, and you need some kick-ass insights that are fun and edgy and full of all kinds of cussing like a sailor, go to buynowbitches.com. <laughs> If you is that a real is that a is that a real it. URL? That is it. That's our one of our tra- one of our training websites. That's amazing. I'm gonna link everything on uh, on the blog post on on our website. Uh, but Jarek, thank you so much for for coming on. Uh, it was like drinking from from a fire hose at times, but it was absolutely amazing. Um, I'm sure people got value from that. But uh, really appreciate the time. Hey.